How did the universe happen? What came before it? What do we really understand about the cosmos and what is our place in it? Mind-bending questions that very few can begin to wrap their heads around, but have no fear because America's favorite astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson, has taken these big topics and given them the bite-sized treatment in his new book, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. And joining me now to explain it all to us is author Neil deGrasse Tyson, who, by the way, is also the director of the American Museum of Natural History's Hayden Planetarium. Neil, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Neil, first of all, what is astrophysics? What does it study? So, it's, it's quite simple. It's everything that goes on in the universe um, outside of Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> that? Oh, just that? <laughs> yes, that's all. That's all. So, planets, moons, stars, comets. Uh, galaxies. So what to consider here is we do experiments on Earth and remarkable fact that what we determine to be true of nature on Earth actually applies across the universe and across time. So that science as a, as a, as, as a process with its methods and tools uh, have so much power even though we're sort of localized here on Earth. So why do you think that this particular science uh, is the one that's most captivating? I mean, yeah. even irresistible for us non-scientists. Now, personally, I think most sciences are captivating. But what may distinguish the universe as a destination from botany or chemistry or geology is that we've all, I think we've all been out under the night sky mm -hmm. and have been struck by the canopy of stars that are up there. You look up and you say, where am I? Where am I come from? Where am I going? What does it all mean? These are some of the deepest questions we've ever asked ourselves in the history of thought. Right. You go far enough back, or even today, anytime people imagined gods, deity, it's not, unless you're animist, where everything is sort of infused with a spirit, if you otherwise have non-spirit-based gods, they're, are they under your feet? No, they're in the sky. They are in the sky. And, you know, the Sistine Chapel was not painted on the floor. It was painted on the ceiling, in the sky. And so this idea of looking up where we put the things we revere the most. We're hardwired. The, we, I, we may just be hardwired for that. And I have a hypothesis, which I haven't, I got to double check this with some anthropologists, but humans are one of the few mammals that are completely comfortable sleeping on our backs. Uh, yeah. Okay? We can do that. I, it's Other animals, they're vulnerable. We're completely comfortable sleeping, and we sleep at night. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, you see the sky. You see the sky. Yeah. So let's get back to the book, uh, the beginning of the book, and mm -hmm. the first question you ask, which is... By the way, the first chapter is called In the Beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear. See? So, yeah. Again. So how <laughs> did the universe begin? Take us through as, as a summary of, of the first three seconds, as, the first couple of seconds, as you're doing the book. But of course, that sounds like nothing with the first two seconds. It's you're huge. asking a lot of me now yeah, to yeah. convey the first few seconds. Um, so what you need to know is that all evidence that we've gleaned, obtained with telescopes in particle accelerators as analog for what's going on in the universe, tells us that 14 billion year, 13.8, if you want to be more precise, 13.8 billion years ago, all of the universe occupied the same point at the same time, a point smaller than the period at the end of a sentence. We have, from there, we have rapid expansion, and the universe is expanding and cooling. But when you're that small, you're very hot, and temperatures are huge, and at those temperatures, matter and energy form a soup. There's no discrete particles because they're always popping in and out of existence, becoming matter and energy and back to matter again. What was before that? Here's something before that was nothing. How did that happen? I, Do we have a clue? I don't know what was before the Big Bang. Okay. So, so, it's, so I should say, I'm delighted to be able to answer that question with great confidence. We have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea. We have taught people working on it. There's some ideas that have cogent arguments for why they would be true, but we don't have evidence for them yet, or perhaps ever, that our universe is part of a multiverse, yeah. some larger entity where universes are just popping yeah. in and out of existence with slightly different laws of physics manifest within them, which would make them very dangerous yeah. to visit. Yeah. 
You don't want to step into a universe where laws of physics, you can just <laughs> decompose into a pile of goo because all the forces holding you together as handsome man <laughs> won't work in that universe. <laughs> and so there it is. Yeah. So if that's the case, we would understand what was around before our universe. Yeah. It just would have been part of this multiverse. However, it just pushes the origins question that much deeper. Where the multiverse come from? Yeah. Notice we thought at a time that Earth was kind of unique and special, and we found out we're one of eight planets. Eight, get over it. <laughs> yeah. And then we thought the sun. Clearly, the sun is. Well, no, the sun is one of a hundred billion stars in the galaxy. The galaxy, the Milky Way. No, we're one of a hundred billion galaxies. The universe. No, we may be one of an infinite number of universes. Each one of these steps is a demotion of your sense of uniqueness in the world. And if that continues, it may be. Because the universe is famous for never making anything in ones. <laughs> it may be not even a multiverse itself. It could be that a multiverse is part of a metaverse that is itself comprised of multiverses. Yeah. We can't it rule is. that out. So what you have is the burst of the sun at the end of that vanishing point framed by the steel and metal canyons of our tall buildings.